Rescue 2 tributes pour in from all across Montana. He was the kind of person that could walk in the room and light the whole room up with just a smile or even a word. The Bighorn County Sheriff killed in a head-on crash. Tonight, family and friends remember the law enforcement leader, plus unlikely heroes. We were just answering the call uh, of duty here to, to give a lifeline to some farms that were in massive, uh, massive need. Three Montana farmers travel to war-ravaged Israel to help in any way they can and lighting the way. Really, it's been that real like patchwork quilt. A unique bike trail weaves its way through downtown Billings. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, a community and a department mourning. The Bighorn County Sheriff killed in a head-on crash last night on Highway 212. 55-year-old Daryl King, a Gulf War veteran, spent almost his entire career in law enforcement. Our Alina Howder spoke with the heartbroken family and friends as they remember him. There's a cloud hanging over Bighorn County this Monday as friends, family, and community members mourn the loss of 55-year-old Daryl King. The Bighorn County Sheriff accomplished so much in a lifetime that was cut too short. <laughs> The patrol cars stretched one after another after another. A fitting procession as the body of fallen Bighorn County Sheriff Daryl King was escorted back to Hardin Monday. You couldn't ask for a better son, a better brother, a better father. He was one of the greatest men I ever had the privilege of knowing. Mark Denny says his older brother, Daryl, was his mentor. This is for you, Daryl. A man who made it his mission to make the world a better place. He always wanted to find a way to help the community. And when he said he was going to run for sheriff, we all agreed he would be the greatest sheriff ever. The list of Daryl's accomplishments could fill a novel. He was a Marine who served in Desert Storm in Operation Desert Shield. He was proud of that. He was proud to be a military man. And like I said, he wore it on his sleeve every day. Crow Tribal elected Senator Pat Alden Jr. says that's partly why Daryl was elected. They knew he would get the job done. He's been instrumental in um, the law enforcement side and uh, curbing the issues of lack of law enforcement in the county and the reservation. Alden says King was also one of the community's biggest cheerleaders, even sending processions of patrol cars to accompany hard and high teams whenever they would win. Once the volleyball came in, he had bought over 10 squad cars, law enforcement, escorting them into town. So things like that. I mean, a phone call away and he... he he loved his community and he wanted to get involved. Daryl is survived by his parents, his wife Mary, and two daughters. But he was a friend to anyone who knew him. He didn't make friends, he made family. So everyone that got to know him eventually became a brother, sister, mother, and father. And it's a loss that will take time to heal. He cared for everyone. And the legacy he leaves, I mean, it's going to be hard to feel. And I think that's why it hurt so much. In Hardin, Alina Howder, MTN News. The Billings Police Department and U.S. Attorney Jesse Laslovich among those passing along statements tonight. Laslovich saying his family should know that federal law enforcement held Sheriff King in the highest regard and will honor his legacy of kindness and diplomacy by working collaboratively with all of our partners to keep the people of Bighorn County, the Crow Tribe, and Northern Cheyenne tribe safe. U.S. officials say a deal to free hostages from Gaza could be close. The high stakes negotiations come as thousands are evacuated from Gaza's biggest hospital, including the smallest patients. Dozens of premature Palestinian babies are now safe after evacuating to Egypt on Sunday. But a doctor says eight of those babies did not survive the journey. Israeli forces say they have more evidence Hamas used Gaza's largest hospital as a command center, releasing video of a tunnel. Health officials say more than 13,000 Palestinians have been killed including 5,000 children. All of that violence is happening halfway around the world from Billings, but three Montana farmers find themselves inside the war zone. They've been in the country for a few weeks, helping Israeli farmers, many of who have been forced to leave their land, fight. Our Charlie Kleps shares their story. You've heard the saying before, not all heroes wear capes. And that's certainly the case in Israel right now, as several Montana farmers who work in fields just like this one across the state are coming to the rescue. 
We've all seen the disturbing sights and sounds of the war. It was just completely brutal. Really, they're not saying that on the news because it's so bad. But while most of us just hear about the violence in Israel, three Montana farmers are living it. There's a certain sense of a peace about it. I don't think any of us are scared or worried. Um, it's like we know where we stand and we're standing strong in it. The farmers, along with another from Arkansas, are a part of a program called Hyovel. It's existed in Israel for nearly 20 years and brings farmers to the area to help with whatever is needed. Just kind of things that people don't necessarily think about that would be in trouble in these times. A lot of the time, that's help harvesting crops or building fences. And it's help needed now more than ever, as the war has forced farmers into reserve positions within the nation's military. It's not a walk in the park here. It's a you know pretty intense situation, so we want to make sure we're, we're bringing guys that are well aware of, of what's going on. Operating Director Joshua Waller recruited these four specifically. Each has volunteered in Israel before. In addition to helping farmers, Hyoville has also helped raise more than $2 million for Jewish villages to purchase everything from bulletproof jackets and helmets to drones in the fight against Hamas. When Josh called, he said, if there's anywhere in the world that needs you right now, it's, it's Israel. And so that pretty much settled it for me. I decided that I'm not going to ignore that. A big decision. Ploker's family is back home in Hamilton. The Strain brothers are from near Augusta. Well, there's definitely stuff back home that should be getting done. I mean, I have a lot of hay that should be getting sold. Yeah, you know, we dropped what we were doing and came over as soon as we could. I, I can speak for myself and I think the rest of us, we feel safe. But there also is, you know, it is, you do feel the tension because at any moment, you know that you're surrounded by people who share the same the same thought process to, of the people that committed uh, the attack on October 7th. But it's a decision they all say is a no-brainer, a chance to help at a time when it's most needed. A lot of people say that they support Israel and they care about the Jewish people and, they, and you know, they're pro-Israel. But it's it's one thing saying it, it's another thing actually stepping up and doing it. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. No big surprise that we're in November and talking about wind around Livingston, Big Timber, Harleton. You see some gusts tomorrow, perhaps 30, 40 miles an hour around the Livingston area. In fact, a 50 mile per hour wind gust wouldn't be out of the question. Check it out down the road as there's expected even higher winds. As that southwesterly wind will develop around the Big Timber area. And let's throw in Harleton as well because, again, we could be looking at these wind gusts 30 over 40 miles per hour at times. So as far as temperatures go, Tuesday, Wednesday, the red shaded areas indicate where we're going to have warmer than average temperatures. But come Thanksgiving, it gets colder and our snow totals have been going up. We'll take a look at that with complete forecast details just a few minutes from now. Billings is adding another trail to its repertoire. This time it's the lights of bike wheels that will guide the way. As I found out in this week's Out and About, the idea was awarded a $40,000 state grant to finish and embolden people to visit places in the city they would have never gone until now. Out and About is sponsored by Blue Creek Storage at Shorey. They say darkness cannot drive out darkness. Positive activity doesn't generally happen in an alley. Only light can do that. Really, it's been a real like patchwork quilt this project has been. In this case, the light derives from here. More art, more ownership. It's a transformation no city has seen before, but one perhaps Billings needed the most. Property owners across downtown started really noticing alleys that you never wanted to enter were now places people were walking into on purpose. To catch a glimpse, maybe snap a pic, make a memory along what's called the light bike trail. Lindsay Richardson with the Downtown Billings Alliance has the idea started here with a mural and bike art installation behind the pub station. And then we created this giant mural and this lit bike that really did add light to a dark space and that alley changed. And the idea grew to 10 murals and bike lights all around downtown Billings. We have the brewery trail, the walking tr uh, trail. And so we thought, let's have another trail. And artists united to help make it happen. Make a little artists it like Lynn Shields. We have been wanting a mural on that alley forever. That alley is the one behind the sandstone gallery on the 2900 block of 2nd Avenue North where the artists got together and created the most vibrant scene of wildlife and flora with a bike light to finish it off. 
I think it just brightens everything up. It, it brings people in for a different reason. You know, if they weren't coming to see our gallery, maybe they just came to see the mural that they had seen somewhere or heard about. By day, the alleys are filled with colorful imagery, tempting many to explore. Really, our goal is to have people exploring more spaces in downtown. But by night, those spaces act as a nightlight, directing your aversion of a dark alley into a cheerful focal point in the magic city. Downtown Billings now has 10 light bikes to see along the trail. Not all are complete, though, yet with murals. As you can see on this map, the trail has several stops just off of Montana Avenue and then weaves north in between alleys. To see this map in more detail, you can visit our website at ktbq.com and just click on this story. With Thanksgiving almost here and Christmas around the corner, many people are looking to head home for the holidays. And it's once again bringing up gas prices, of course. This year, there's good news, though, on that front with the average price of gas in Montana sitting at $3.32 a gallon. That's just two cents more than the national average. It's even better here in Billings, only $3.26 a gallon. Gas prices have consistently fell for several weeks and are now down about 57 cents a gallon from just a month ago. It's a once again time for the 38th annual Billings Holiday Parade through downtown Billings and this year's theme is home for the holidays. This year's parade will feature over 75 holiday floats, including, of course, a visit from Santa Claus. And if you can't make it downtown, we've got you covered. We'll be streaming the entire parade on the MTN channel and our free Q2 streaming app. It all kicks off at 630 Friday night. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2. A science showdown to senior high teachers making headlines in Australia for this ridiculous experiment. We'll show it all to you next. And in sports, the best of the best, a championship edition of Game Changers is on the way in just a bit.